What are your thoughts on paid features of dating apps? Uh, it is paid features of dating apps is like paying LinkedIn to move your resume up in the ranks so that you can get a fucking job. It's there. It's, it's gatekeeping is what it is. And it sucks. And I would not pay for it. I would not like, I'm not a big fan of the only thing I would use. Like, again, this is me spitballing here. The only thing I would use dating apps for is sourcing. That's it. And by the way, if you don't like, don't, I wouldn't say don't even use dating apps. Now I'm going to go against the, the, probably against the stream on this one, because a lot of people, including Myron and Fresh will say, you know, use everything. You have to spam, you have to spam everything, spam approaches, do it digitally and everything else so that you can sort of like sift, you know, get separate the wheat from the chaff kind of thing. And I understand the logic in that, but I would also say you have to fish where the fish are. And it, I think it's almost, well, definitely, I think it's more important to uh, be good at game live in real time than it is to be good at text game and all this other stuff. And if you're good at text game, great. I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm not saying I'm not shitting on that at all. It is definitely a part, a, a subset of game skills for sure. But though your text game, whatever it is, should be used to facilitate live in person, real time, face to face, you know, interactions. That's I, I if you've read my first book, there's a chapter in there. It's called buffers. I called this as far back as like the mid 2000s. People who are using text, people who are using, you know, uh, dating apps, people who are using digital media, social media as a buffer. That was the title of the chapter buffers. There's a lot of different buffers. One of those happens to be like digital media, like like social media, because it's a buffer against rejection. Oh, thank you. Channel five kept Andrew Tate in Big Brother Despite Probe. Hmm. Is that the one? That's Channel 5. I don't know if that's the documentary, though, Sam. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I'm not really sure. Okay. So, uh, sorry, bro. There we go. All right. Um. So, anyways, the paid features, whatever you, if you're going to use dating apps, you know, bye con Dios, man. I hope, I hope for the best, but I think they can be used strategically, tactically. They can be used, but don't rely on them as a buffer against rejection. And I don't think most guys do now. It used to be that that was the reason why there was like an over dependency on like texting or an over dependency on using like dating. Well, back then it was like dating profiles. It wasn't even really social media. wasn't as big a deal, but when I wrote buffers, that is, but uh, the, what, why I called it a buffer is because it was a buffer against rejection. Anything that sort of puts something between you and actually a girl going, eh, I'm not interested like that, that whole thing, or even like approach anxiety, you use buffers so that you don't, so you're not like putting yourself extending, overextending yourself so much as you're going to get like punched in the, you know, punch in the gut emotionally because she rejected you. So a lot of guys will, will tend to either they check out entirely or they tend to put buffers between themselves and, and rejection. And that could be something like a sedation too. So it could be pornography. It could be like alcohol. It could be like, you know, weed. I got to have weed. I got to, I got to have weed. <laughs> so I can grease the, the, you know, the, the, the bullshit machine. I need weed or I need booze or whatever so that I'm a little more socially loosened up. And I understand it. I used to do exactly the same fucking thing, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, so you have to sort of like, you know, have to lubricate the bullshit machine, I think is, is really what, what what it comes down to. And I, I understand the, the the want for that, or like, but guys want sort of a buffer between them and like, that's ah, all right. I don't have to. people used to call it how half the reason we call it game or, or men make sort of interpersonal rea uh, intersexual dynamics a, a, a game. Right. If you make it a game, it hurts less when you're just playing a game than it does when you're getting like a real fucking physical in your face rejection, you know. So it's like, ah, you struck out. And then it comes down to, oh, I got lucky. Oh, I didn't get lucky. Like if you go, and that's a buffer, by the way, when you think of intersexual dynamics, when you think of like making approaches and if you get shot down, it doesn't, it's not as big a deal if it's a game. If it's just something, it's just something that we're two individuals playing this sort of like this back. It's like, it's like um, interpersonal conversational fencing right that's how you always put it in a fencing right you thrust parry repost uh, you know that kind of stuff that conversation it's better if you think about it and it's a buffer really to think about it in terms of it's game that's why we call it game and i don't have any problem with that by the way i'm not shitting on on even the terminology but i will call out the, the reason why we do that 
we call it game or we turn it out. Well, you're a player, right? Well, but it's women, women feel better about themselves if they get played by a player, not a, this guy's a really horrible human being. He fucked me over kind of thing. They don't, it's, it's much better. It's, it's an ego preservation um, mechanic to say, oh, he's a player. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, he got, he slipped in under the radar. Oh, he's a player. Oh, shit. He knew what he was fucking about. It's just, it sounds better if you turn it into a game or you depersonalize it by making it something like that. That's a buffer as well. Same thing as, as you know, a digital, you know, social media is easy. You can, if you have an over dependency on it, you get the idea that that's, you know, it's a buffer. And so, sometimes you, maybe you need that a little bit. But if it's an over dependency on it, if that's the only way you can interact with people, then it's a problem. <laughs> uh, or if the only way you can meet chicks is if you're like, if you got to, you got to pre booze, right? You got to get a little buzz on. If that's, if you have to do that all the time, then maybe you need to go back to square one, play it on hard mode a little bit. Uh, what was the other, uh, you know, sedations in general are, are, are more or less buffers against rejection. And in fact, there's some of that are more effective than others. Like if you're pornography or if you just have decided to check out of this MGTOW, black pill, nihilism, doomerism, whatever the hell ism you want to call it. It's really a buffer against rejection. I'm just not going to play the game. I'm going to wait for her to come to me. Mm, no, you're not. Because she's not going to come to you. In fact, I, ha I even have something loaded up for that. Hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is how this turned out to be a really good segue. And I'm going to ruin it because I have bad timing. Let that guy go. Uh, this dude? No, not that one. This guy. Okay, here you go. Perfect. Perfect timing. Thing with get on your purpose and the women will come. They just won't. I know these guys. They're 28, 30, 32. And their whole life they've believed in this lie that once I make the money, once I have the money, girls will just naturally flock to me. Who do you think you are, Mr. High Value? Does, life doesn't work like that. You're, you're not just gonna stand in the club like, oh my God, Mr. High Value is, is in the corner. Like, like, let's approach. No, you will still need to make the first move, no matter how much money you have. And if you think, no, I won't have to, or it's gonna be much easier, fine. But you're not gonna attract the women you want anyways. The types of women who will want you just for your money, not the types of women you want anyways, right? You want women to like you for your personal personality for your character for your trait okay, this is where he loses the narrative but i'll let him keep let him cook a little more for your actual essence for who you really are your essence do you want women to like you Michael to essence. your life just for your money probably not essence of gilfling <laughs> what movie um yeah so uh but i do think he has a point there is that you're not just going to go sit over in the side of the club and go well I'll just let my money like do the talking for me what you can lead with your wallet by not doing a goddamn thing, by just driving an expensive car. You know, I don't think a lot of guys really understand that. But again, that can, even your money, like money, muscles and game, like when you are deficient in one of those three areas, you tend to gross out in the one that like works the best for you. Money, muscles, game. I think I think all three of those tend to be well synergistic. There's a there's a buzz term for you. They're synergistic in that they all work sort of dynamically together. Uh, you probably heard me say this a, a bunch of times where uh, I don't think it's like whenever whenever Rich Cooper or somebody else says something like, oh, don't focus on women or no, no, don't chase women, chase excellence. That's ambiguous. And I think that if you're just chasing one thing to the exception of others, that ends up becoming a buffer. So um, chase all of them. I won't say chase, but focus on all of them. Using the term chase is like, oh, you're chasing the girls on the playground. You want to pull their pigtails. No, you're not chasing fucking women. OK, but be open to the fact that maybe there's a chick that's a, that's attracted to you because either you got yourself in shape. Oh, my God. Really? You're going to the gym to be in shape. Yes. You got money. Oh, great. You know, a woman might be attracted to you as a result of that. Or you've got really stellar bulletproof game and you're a really good conversationalist. You're funny as fuck. You're a charming motherfucker. Right. Those all work synergistically together. I don't see why that's even a big, I, this is not like some big, you know, secret of the universe. <laughs> Focus on all of them. I don't see any problem with, I mean, why wouldn't you? But I don't know. Uh, let's see, I got that. Oh, hey, thank you. One more time. One more time. By the way, anyone who says you're toxic is probably toxic. Mm. 
I'm not toxic. You are. <laughs> did you guys see? Did you guys see the exchange? I, oh man, I wish I would have clipped this. The exchange between Destiny and Alex Jones on that on the last the January sixth debate, right? And it was like, I no, you are no, you are no. It was like that Pee Wee Herman skit in like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? No, infinity. Why don't you make me? I well, you make me. Shut up. No, you make me. I don't make monkeys. So just train them. Like I was waiting for that line to come out of like Alex Jones's mouth or some shit. It was just like so juvenile middle school shit. But it was classic. By the way, I, it's it's Abbott and Costello shit, man. I mean, it was just it was the you know, Keystone Cops level of uh, three stooges level of, of of humor. Thank you very much for for brightening my day. Uh, Rolo, cold approach is harder as they are comparing you to online. Yes, true. Nope, no doubt. 100% agree. Impression girl in the bookstore, Iceberg Slim came up in the conversation. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I, I don't know if you guys saw the, I don't want to just answer. I got other things to talk about today, guys. But uh, uh, there was a debate between Mike Sartain and I don't even know who the other guy was. We're talking about the difference between cold approach and like social circle game, which of course is what Mike's big thing is, is like social proof, pre-selection, social proof, pre-selection. That's really what Mike, Mike Sartain generally follows. And I'm of the opinion that all forms of game are really fundamentally founded in pre-selection and social proof really, but like mostly pre-selection because you don't get your foot in the door. You don't have the conversation. You don't, you're all your bulletproof game flies out the fucking window. If there's not some sort of, if that, if that girl doesn't see you as someone who's worth her while. And why do I say that? Well, very similar to what Mike always gets into when he asks the girls, like you guys, did you go to CVS? Did you go to Walgreens? The drugstores are in here. Did you go to Walgreens? Right. Yeah, I did. Blah, blah, blah. CVS. Did you notice who was stocking the shelves there? No. Did you know who the cash? Did you notice the cashier? No. But if you saw the guy out in the parking lot of CVS and he drove up in a Lamborghini, you would rec- you would remember his eye color. You would remember if he had a scruff on his beard. You would remember how tall he was, how tan he was, how jacked he was. You would remember every last aspect of that guy. That's what I'm talking about. So when it comes to that social proof or that pre-selection, that comes before anything else. That comes before game. That comes before everything. It's a, it's instant. And I love when we get into the conversation about like, uh, this is classic because this is from like the early 80s. This is like fast times at Ridgemont High shit, okay? It's like a girl knows within the first five minutes of meeting you whether she's going to fuck you or not. No, she knows within the first five minutes of meeting you whether she won't fuck you or not. After that, it's up to you. A lot of times when guys get into a situation with a girl and they're like, they're, I mean, it's, it's on. The only thing they have to do is not fuck it up. And sometimes that's really what boils. That's really kind of inspired. And that's what uh, is rooted in pre-selection and social proof. There you go. Yes. A cold approach. I understand. You have to, you have to be, you have to be skilled. You have to have fucking ice in your veins, man.